Every day, most of us walk past one of the simplest, strongest health helpers in the kitchen without a second thought. That papery little bulb has powered folk medicine for centuries, and modern labs keep finding reasons why. If you give garlic seven consistent days, prepared the right way, you won't wake up with superpowers, but you may notice calmer numbers, steadier energy, and little wins that add up. This isn't magic, it's chemistry you can set in motion with a cutting board and a knife. And before we step through what can change over a week, the crucial truth is this. How you prepare garlic determines whether you get a therapeutic dose or almost nothing at all. Raw, intact cloves don't contain the star compound people talk about. That compound, allicin, only forms when you break the clove's cells. Think crush, chop, mince, and let an enzyme called allianase go to work on a precursor called allion. That's the moment the famous aroma blooms and that scent is your signal that biology is happening. If you heat garlic too soon, you denature allianase and short-circuit allicin formation. If you give it a brief rest after chopping about 10 minutes, you allow the reaction to finish. Food and cancer research groups have been advising this chop and wait habit for years. And biochemical reviews from nutrition scientists explain the allian allicin pathway in detail. In practical terms, crush or mince, wait a bit, then use it. If you cook it, add it later, or keep heat gentle to preserve more of what you just created. When you start this seven-day experiment, the first wins are often cardiovascular. Garlic sulfur compounds can support the tiny responsive lining of your blood vessels, the endothelium, by nudging nitric oxide availability in a better direction and by tamping down oxidative stress. In people with elevated blood pressure or other risk factors, reviews of human studies report small but meaningful improvements in measures like flow-mediated dilation and modest drops in blood pressure, especially with consistent use. Aged or fermented extracts show similar trends, likely through nitric oxide-related pathways. Whole food garlic can contribute too, particularly when you're also improving diet and activity. You won't replace medication with a clove, but you can give your vessels more reasons to relax. By day two, many people notice they feel a little more resilient. Garlic doesn't turn your immune system into a superhero, but it does appear to influence immune activity markers in a way that tracks with the folklore. The best high-level look at colds found only one solid trial suggesting fewer colds with an allicin containing supplement and emphasize that we still need better studies. That's the honest state of the evidence, promising, not definitive. What you can bank on is that a daily garlic habit is compatible with a balanced immune support routine. Sleep, hydration, movement, and nutrient-dense foods. And that combination reliably moves the needle. Around day three, the numbers on paper story starts to get interesting. Meta-analyses, pooling, randomized trials report modest improvements in blood lipids with garlic. Total and LDL cholesterol tend to drift down a bit over weeks. While HDL usually doesn't change much, it's not a statin and the effect sizes are modest, but they're real enough to matter when layered onto a healthy pattern, particularly for older adults and people with borderline dyslipidemia. If you've ever felt stuck between do nothing and jump straight to medication, this is where food as adjunct shines. Keep the dose reasonable, stay consistent, and track results over months, not days. Midweek, the story that gets the most headlines, cancer, deserves a careful grounded take. Population studies generally link higher allium intake with lower risks of some gastrointestinal cancers. But not all analyses agree, and supplements don't consistently reproduce food-based findings. Mechanistically, garlic compounds can upregulate the body's phase 2 detox enzymes and may influence how cells repair damage and decide when to self-destruct. In the stomach, they also show activity against Helicobacter pylori in some contexts, although human results are mixed. Big picture. Garlic can be part of a dietary pattern that supports cancer prevention, but it isn't a shield and it isn't a cure. Build your plate around vegetables, legumes, whole grains, and healthy proteins. Use garlic as a frequent guest, not the whole show. By day five, the metabolic angle becomes more noticeable for some people. Trials and meta-analyses suggest garlic can modestly improve fasting glucose and insulin sensitivity, particularly in individuals with metabolic syndrome, 
non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or type 2 diabetes when added to standard care and diet changes. These aren't overnight shifts, and they're not a license to ignore blood sugar basics, but they are the kind of incremental improvements that stack up. If you're tracking with a glucometer, you won't necessarily see a dramatic single-day change. What you're looking for is a gentler slope over weeks. By the sixth day, your attention might shift to the liver, the body's tireless chemistry lab. Animal data and human trials point to garlic supporting the liver's protective systems, including the family of enzymes that tag toxins for safe disposal. In people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, small randomized trials of garlic powder have shown improvements in liver ultrasound scores and liver enzymes alongside better lipids and fasting glucose. Reviews suggest garlic may help by easing oxidative stress and low-grade inflammation. Again, this is a supporting role, not a solo act. The big movers for liver health are weight management, movement, and a diet rich in plants. Garlic just helps the whole orchestra play in tune. On day 7, it's worth talking about blood flow and clotting. Garlic sulfur chemistry has been shown to reduce platelet stickiness in lab settings and some human studies, which is one reason people talk about its natural blood thinning effect. At culinary doses, the impact is typically small, but concentrated supplements can be potent enough to matter, particularly if you're already on prescription anticoagulants or have a procedure coming up. The upside of slightly less sticky platelets is obvious. The caution is equally important. Food should complement, not complicate, your doctor's plan. If you're in a higher risk group or take blood thinners, loop your clinician in before you add supplemental garlic. So, how do you set yourself up for the best seven days? Start with the prep rule that makes all the difference. Take one fresh clove, crush or mince it, and let it rest on the board for about 10 minutes before it goes anywhere near heat. That short wait lets alanase finish its job, giving you a higher elicin yield. If raw garlic is too fiery for your stomach, tuck the minced clove into a spoonful of olive oil or yogurt, or sprinkle it over warm, not scorching food at the end of cooking. If you do cook it, keep the heat gentle and the timing late so you don't undo the chemistry you just created. This tiny habit is the highest leverage move you can make with garlic. How much is reasonable? For most adults, a small daily culinary dose, about a single clove, fits comfortably into meals. That could be smashed into avocado, whisked into a lemon olive oil dressing, stirred into warm lentils, or scattered over roasted vegetables right before serving. If you prefer capsules or aged extracts, read labels carefully and choose products tested by third parties. Remember that supplements can hit harder than food and interact with medications. If your stomach is sensitive, pair garlic with food rather than taking it on an empty stomach and build up slowly. If you ever experience burning, rash, or unusual bruising, back off and talk to a clinician. A few smart pairings can amplify your effort. Garlic plays well with olive oil, nuts, and fish, whose fats help you absorb fat-soluble antioxidants across your meal. It's also a natural teammate for onions and leeks, which bring their own sulfur compounds to the table. Think of small daily habits, a minced clove resting while you prep, a bright dressing you use all week, a warm bean salad finished with garlic lemon parsley, a tomato cucumber bowl that gets its kick from chopped garlic that sat while you sliced. The more you embed the habit, the less you have to think about it. There are also wise boundaries. If you're on anticoagulants, about to have surgery, pregnant, dealing with reflux, or managing a complex condition, ask a professional what's safe for you, especially before starting supplements. Don't apply raw garlic to skin. It can cause chemical burns. Don't count on garlic to eradicate an H. pylori infection or to substitute for proven therapies. And don't expect a clove to outrun a lifestyle that keeps pushing your numbers the wrong way. Garlic is an ally not a fix-all. What should you expect over a focused week? Day one is about vessel friendliness, slightly easier flow, a hint of relaxation in the system if you're someone who runs tense. Day two is a nudge to immune balance, not a shield, but a steadying hand. Day three is the start of small shifts in lipid chemistry that only matter if you keep stacking days. Day four is the prevention mindset, a diet pattern with garlic in it that supports cell protective processes over a lifetime. Day 5 leans toward better glucose handling when you're also doing the basics, right? Day 6 is liver support. 
particularly relevant if you're working on weight and metabolic health. Day 7 is about clean, safe circulation and the reminder to use food wisely if you're on medicines. Each day is minor by itself. Together they add up to a measurable, livable pattern you can sustain. The bigger perspective is simple. Food acts slowly and multiplies its effects when you're consistent. Garlic won't replace a prescription that your doctor says you need, but it can be a daily vote for vascular ease, metabolic steadiness, and flavorful cooking that keeps you showing up for yourself. The most powerful part of this seven-day challenge isn't the calendar. It's the habit you'll carry forward. Chop the clove, wait the minutes, make something delicious, and let your body do the quiet work. In a month, ask yourself how your meals taste, how your routine feels, and what your numbers show. If you like the answers, keep going. And if you only remember one thing, make it this. The chemistry that supports your health starts when your knife meets the clove and keeps working when you show up again tomorrow.